Hey there everyone, welcome back to Lead Coding. So today we are going to cover this easy problem from the Lead Code Bi-Weekly Contest 42. So the reason why I'm covering this problem is sometimes you might see the constraints of a problem and then you might come up with a solution and then move on to the next problem. But there's always a space for the optimization. So let's say if you're sitting for an interview, the interviewer would want you to come up with the most optimal approach. He would not say that your approach is n square and because the constraints are low, your solution might get accepted. But he would want you to come up with the most optimal solution in terms of space as well as time. So now we are going to look at this problem. The constraints are very low. The constraints are given as 100. The Even the n cube solution might pass. But then we will see what is the most optimal approach that we can devise for this specific problem. All right, so let us go through the problem statement first. I will just simply explain you what the problem says. So basically there are a few students standing in a queue. So these are the student and they have some demand. So a student might want a sandwich which is of uh, type one and the other student is there who want a sandwich of type zero. So this is their demands. And then there are sandwiches uh, which are stacked over one another. So let me just explain this. So these are the sandwiches. This is the sandwich of type 1, this is the sandwich of type 0, then 1, 0, and so on. So this is a stack. Basically, uh, the only operation that we can do is we can take up the topmost sandwich and we cannot disturb the rest of them without picking up the topmost. So we will have to go sequence-wise. And then there are students which are standing in a queue. So this is a queue. Let's say this is the first student standing in the queue with zero demand. Then there's a student with the demand as zero again, then a student with the demand as one, and then another student with the demand as one. Now the first student will come, he will pick up this sandwich as it is meeting his demand and he will take the sandwich and go away. So this student is gone, this sandwich is gone. Now the topmost sandwich is one. Another student is coming, his demand is zero, but the topmost sandwich is one and we cannot disturb these sandwiches. So the other operation that we can do is we can send this student to the back. He will go to the back of the queue, he will wait for his turn and he will let the student with the demand one come at the front. Now this student is going to pick up this sandwich, he's, he's satisfied, he goes away, now the topmost sandwich is zero, then the student with the demand one is at the top, but then he won't be able to take this sandwich, so he's again going to go at the back of the queue, he will let the student with the demand zero to come at the front and then he will pick up the sandwich with the type zero and then he will go away. Now only one student is left and only one sandwich is left and the demand of this student is also met and he will go away. So this is what we have to do. If a student is at the front of the queue and the topmost sandwich is not satisfying his demand then he's going to go at the back. All right. So we can simply simulate this. In order to simulate this we are going to use a data structure called DEC. So basically DEC is a data structure in which we can do the operation that is inserting at the front and inserting at the back in a constant time and removing from the front and removing from the back in a constant time. So let us say this is our queue, this is the front of the queue, this is the back of the queue, this is the front and if a student is here let's say with a zero demand the topmost stand which is one then we are going to simply pop this out of the stack in a constant time and then insert it at the back of the stack in a constant time. Then this student is going to come at the front. So we can use DEC and we can simply simulate this. So let us first go through this solution. If you want to uh, move on to the optimized solution, you can just skip this part if you already know about this. Otherwise, you can just follow along. So I will simply code this out. We are using a DEC of type int. Then we will go to each of the sandwich which is available to us. Let me just name this as sandwich and this as student. So S T. We are going to each of the sandwiches. Uh, one more thing, in interviews you cannot just simply change the names. You have to have some meaningful names so that your code is more clear. So just uh, don't go about changing the variable names to X and Y. Just keep them as student and sandwiches. So here is the first sandwich that we have. So we will see if Q dot front also, I think it is given that the size of the student and the lengths are same. So we don't have to worry about if there is something in the queue or not. So queue won't be empty as till the time we are not finished with all these sandwiches. So the queue dot front, if it is equal to the demand A. So the demand is equal to the available sandwich, then we are simply going to pop this queue dot pop uh, from the front. 
okay so now we will have to run a loop so it might be possible that let's say the topmost end which is one and then there are students with the demand zero and there are so many students with the demand zero standing one after another and then there's a student with the demand one after them so we have to send them each one of them at the back so we will have to send them at the back that's why we are running a while loop here so while so this is the size of the queue while s minus minus auto x is equal to q dot front we are selecting a student from the front if x is equal to the current sandwich then we are going to break otherwise we are going to continue else what we have to do is we have to pop this from the queue q dot pop front and we have to insert this x at the back of the queue push back so if it is satisfied then we have to pop this q dot pop front we can actually take this pop operation outside here also we can take this pop operation outside so that the line of code is reduced but then for the sake of clarity I'm just keeping it like this so in this case if we come up to the student with the demand as A, then we are simply going to pop this out and at the same time, we will have to break out of this loop. And I'm keeping another variable which will tell us that if we actually found someone. So that flag is going to be one now. Initially, I'm keeping this flag as zero. So this flag as zero. If I met someone with the demand as A, then I'm going to set this flag and then break out of this loop. And after this while loop, I'm going to check if F is equal to zero, that means that we didn't find a student who wants the sandwich of type A. So in this case, what we had to do is we had to, so in this case, we will have to return that how many students are left unsatisfied. So we can just simply return Q dot size. So these many students are there. They will remain unsatisfied because we were not able to pick up the front sandwich. And without picking up this sandwich, we won't be able to access the sandwiches which are below this. So for the current sandwich, there is no student who wants the sandwich. And that is why this sandwich is never going to be removed from the top. So we won't be able to access more sandwiches which are at the bottom. All right, so in this case, we are simply returning the answer. Otherwise, we'll continue to the next iterations. And here we will return zero. Let us see if it's working. So it is giving us correct answer for this test case. Let me try out with some more test cases. Mm -hmm. So we got wrong answer for this one. If the flag is one, okay. Okay, for the next one, the answer should be three. Oh, I've just forgot to insert the element into the queue. Q dot pushback A. Okay, so return the number of students that are not able to eat. And that should be the size of the queue. Q dot size. Okay, okay, okay. I just got this. So in this case, uh, we found the front element is the same as the type of the sandwich. And we just have to continue from here. Okay. I think now it should give us correct answer. All right. So this is just the simple simulation of whatever the problem statement is saying. So in this case, what you are doing, we were using some extra space here in order to store these elements into the deck. And then what we were doing, we were using a for loop here. Okay. So this for loop was used inside this for loop. So let us analyze the worst case complexity of this problem. So let us say the topmost sandwich is one and then there are n number of students. Let's say these many students are there with the demand as zero and then few students with the demand as one behind this. Let's say these are m number of students here. The topmost sandwich is of type one. Then the next sandwich is of type zero. So uh, we want to reach this student and to reach him we will have to send all these students at the back. Okay. 
at the back of the queue. So for that, we will take big O of n time in order to access, uh, in order to reach this uh, student with the demand as one. Now let's say we let's say this student is satisfied, and now the configuration is going to become like this: one 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 m times at the front, then some zeros here, n times. Uh, this is actually n and zeros here. Now the topmost sandwiches of type one. The front student also wants the sandwich of type one. He will take the sandwich and go away. Done. We are able to satisfy this student. Now the topmost sandwich is zero. Okay. Now there are m minus one student with the demand as one. We will have to send all of them at the back of the queue. Now it is going to take big O of m minus one. Now after this, when all these students at the front are of the type zero, and we will have to send them to the back, then again it is going to take big O of n minus one, and so on. So in the first case, the complexity of this solution is going to become n multiplied by the total number of student, and let us also consider them as n. So these are the number of sandwiches, these are the number of students. Overall complexity of the solution is going to become n square here. All right. So, the solution is accepted because of the low constraints. We are uh, using the extra space here, big O of n extra space, and we are using the big O of n squared complexity as well. So now let us talk about uh, just optimizing this approach. So now I took an example where all the students at the front were having a demand of zero, and all the students at the back were having a demand of one, and the topmost sandwich is uh, of type one and then zero and then one and so on okay so what we were doing now in order to take the sandwich from the top we will only be able to access the sandwiches which are below this if we pick up this sandwich so we will have to just eliminate this sandwich in order to eliminate the sandwich we were searching a student the first student with the demand as one so we were bringing him to the front and in order to bring him to the front we were sending all these students at the back one by one. So in other words, what we were doing is we were trying to search a student with the demand as one. So that is what we were doing, isn't it? So we were just searching for a student if there is any student with a demand as one. Uh, so if there is a student with the demand as one, we will just take him to the front. We will send all these students which are in front of him to the back using that specific operation that we were doing. But instead of doing all these operations, we could just think of searching a student with the demand as one. So we will just see if there's a student with the demand as one in the available students. And if there's a student, we will just eliminate that student and eliminate this sandwich from the top. Then we will see if there's any student left with the demand as zero. So if there is any student with the demand as zero, we are going to eliminate that student and this sandwich. We are Now we are not bothered about the student at the front. We just want to search a student with a specific demand because we can always bring that student to the front using the operations which are given to us. Here let's say if the number of demands are uh, not only one and two, they are one, two, three, four and five, then we will see that if there is any student with a specific demand, let's say if you want to find a student with the demand as three, we'll simply search the student in the available students here. If there's any student with the demand three, we can simply bring him to the front by moving all these to the back. So we just have to keep track of these students and their demands. So we won't be simulating it now. We will just keep count of uh, these students with specific demands. So for let us say in this example, so let us say this is the example, these are the students and these are the sandwiches. So it is one, zero, 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 one and one. These students are uh, three students with the demand, actually four students with the demand as one and two students with the demand as zero. So we just have to keep a track of this. The topmost sandwich is of type one. We will see if there's any student with a demand one. So there are four. So we will just reduce the number of students here. Now there are three students and we will just remove this. Then we will see the topmost sandwich is uh, of type zero. We will see if there's any student with the demand as zero. So there are two students. We will be eliminating one of them 
then only one student is left with the remainder as zero, and we are going to eliminate the sandwich. Then coming to the next sandwich of type zero, we will see there is only one student with demand as zero. Then we will eliminate this sandwich and this student. Then we'll come to the next sandwich. This will be of type zero. Then we will see if there is any student with the demand as zero. There is none. So now we got stuck, and now we will return the number of students left, or in other words, we can return the number of sandwiches left. That is uh, eventually equal to the number of students which are left unsatisfied. So this is the answer. This is very simple. Now let me just go on and code this out. So what we have to do is we have to keep the track of both these uh, type of students. So let me create a vector, a vector of size two. Okay. Now we are going to each of the students, v of a plus plus. If a student is having a demand zero, then v of zero will be incremented. Otherwise, v of one will be incremented. Okay. Now we'll go to each of these sandwiches one by one. If v of a is greater than zero, it means that if there's any student with the demand as of uh, with the demand of type a, then we will do v of a minus minus. Otherwise, we're gonna return. Uh, we gonna return v of a plus v of a zor one, or basically v of zero plus v of one. These are the students which are left. These are the students which are left unsatisfied. Uh, I think either v of one would be zero, of, or v of zero would be zero, whatever a is. So, so if a is zero, then this part is going to be zero. Otherwise, this part is going to be zero, and th that is the only reason why we are coming to the else condition. Okay, so here we can return zero. Let me try to run this. It is giving us correct answer. And it got accepted. So we are using only constant extra space here. The space complexity is constant here. Only uh, we are using a vector of size two only, and the time complexity is also big O of n, big O of n for this loop, and again big O of n for this loop. So this is the optimal solution. If you like the video, hit the like button to get more such content in the future. Do subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon because we are uploading the videos regularly. Thank you.